You know, the good news about all this stuff is that when tragedy comes, we pull together. God makes sure of that. So things was going too fast anyway. You know, we've been oppressed. Now we're going through um, the market thing. What do they call it? Um, it's really a correction. It's called a recession. Keep going like that, it'll be a depression. So let's stop this nonsense now and pull together. This is how we have church during a antivirus session. Be blessed.
really, um, the, the Bible says where our hearts are, at least our hearts are where our treasure is. Amen. Our hearts are where our treasure is. And if uh, we really love God, we will give as He asks of us, a tenth of what we, we've been blessed with, not in a begrudging way, but in a, in a cheerful, worshipful kind of Let us pray. God, Father, we ask your blessings now on this period of offering. We ask you to bless those who give, those who don't have it to give. We pray your blessings upon all, O oh God. Teach us to be generous, not just in church, but to those in need everywhere, in family, outside of family, wherever. Help us to be giving persons. We thank you in Jesus' name.
preach and um, still kind of evade in this. Um, it's all right. Sir. But um, if you allow me to uh, sing a little something. It's all right. Amen. I need you in every second, every minute, every hour. Amen. Yes. This is just some ways I call on him sometimes. Oh, Testament, 
uh, before Christ, mercy was in short supply. They didn't have the ultimate intercessor to advocate for their souls and foolishness. Isaiah knew that they were in trouble and basically repented for his part in it. He knew that he wasn't worthy. The Lord took his, his obedience and sincerity and offered him a job. He was commissioned to be God's mouthpiece, so to speak. I like the way God gave Isaiah an opportunity to step up, though. He could have just commanded him or directed him to go and do this for him. But, um, you know, um, Isaiah stepped up. Uh, Proverbs 19.21, many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. Yeah. You can try to skirt God's responsibility he's charged you with. Yeah. You may get away with it for a little while, yeah. or think you're getting away with it, but just know that you'll be confronted with it in so many ways. Yeah. When I first heard from God that I was called to preach, I made up so many excuses <laughs> as to why it couldn't be right, this couldn't be true, why I couldn't be the one he was referring to. All right. I felt like there was no way God wanted me to preach. All right. I didn't feel worthy, qualified, didn't know where I would get the time to write sermons. I was so busy with my job and family and stuff. Um, and I hated writing papers in college. Um, and I, I just felt like I wasn't going to be able to live up to God's standard of yeah. social responsibility. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. And I was also thinking, why now? I'm like 40 something more. You know, <laughs> <laughs> like, you know this just can't be. Uh, <laughs> and, I, and I hated public speaking. Even though I had to do it sometimes for, uh, for my job, I fought it for a great while. Yeah. But God started speaking to me through every sermon I heard at church, mm. uh, every sermon I may have uh, saw on YouTube, through gospel music, through some of the least likely ways you could think of. Mm -hmm. He made it pretty plain and clear uh, that he was talking to me mm -hmm. and right. what he was uh, commissioning me to do. So, since I couldn't escape the message he was sending me, there was no mistaking that I needed to step up. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that I've learned over the years, though, is that God doesn't always choose the qualified. Most of the time, he qualifies the chosen. All right. Wow. That's good stuff, man. I'm still a work in progress. All right, Amen. but he has brought me a long, long way. Mm -hmm. I can tell you though that when I accepted my calling, um, I felt truly free. Yeah. Uh, when I submitted to his will, yeah. I felt truly free. And most people think of submitting as like surrendering or giving into something in defeat. But it was totally different than I imagined. Yeah. I could even tell that there was kind of a spiritual burden lifted in my own household. Mm, yes. um, that's not to say that I, you know, I still don't face obstacles and, and trials and problems. Um, but Romans two, uh, eight twenty eight, and we know that all things which we get work together for the good of those who love Him, yeah. who have been called, who have been called according to His purpose. So that, that's the difference now. Mm. I know that everything that is happening in my life uh, is for his good, not mine. Mm. And that um, his promises will not return void. Mm. All right. Amen. Amen. That's right. Mm. So back to the fact that uh, God allowed Isaiah to, to step up. And he said, who, who will I send? Who will go for us? All right. And Isaiah again said, here am I, send me. Mm -hmm. Take note of the fact that Isaiah repented first, you know, because he didn't feel worthy. Amen. 
Mm -hmm. He knew he wasn't worthy. All right. He considered himself just to be as guilty as the rest of them. Amen. Mm -hmm. But he yeah. confessed with his mouth his sins, and the angel of the Lord assisted him in atoning for his sins. So he confessed, but he also acknowledged the king of kings. He said, my eyes have seen the king, the Lord Almighty. Mm -hmm. He knew where his help came from. Mm -hmm. He knew whose presence he was in. Who wouldn't want to be down with someone who rose like God? Mm -hmm. All right. He right. said, his train filled the temple. Mm -hmm. There is a meat coat on earth that had come close to rivaling what God was sporting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's not a pimp in Chicago that could wear a meat that would be cold enough to, <laughs> to come close to what God would have. All right. If you could just touch the hem of Jesus' garment and be healed, yeah. just think about being in the same room with, room with God's whole train. Mm. I imagine his train was fashioned with the brightest stars of the universe. All right. The kind of stars that would make the Milky Way blush. Mm. All right. He came in smoother than Solomon and all of, all of Solomon's splendor. Mm -hmm. He also rolled deep. Mm. He had seraphim with him. Mm -hmm. These an angels had wings on their feet. Mm -hmm. I remember uh, when the first Jordans came out, they had a picture of wings on them. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they just had a picture. That was pretty <laughs> <laughs> And then the new Jordans had a picture of someone flying. Mm -hmm. That's true. But the seraphim were actually flying. Mm. All right. God was fly, and they were flying. Mm. All right. <laughs> All right. Isaiah wasn't a fool. He jumped at the chance to be a part of God's army. Mm. Yeah. To be a part of God's kingdom. Mm. I don't know if you noticed, but uh, when God put it out there that he needed someone, he also said, who will go for us? Yeah. He was letting him know that he would be a part of a family, a kingdom, yeah. a royal priesthood. Yeah. Wow. So he wanted to be down. Hmm. God had to send me about 50 different uh, signs before I even said so much as yes. <laughs> Let alone saying, here in my city. Yeah. All right. he, he's, he's working on me, though. He's leading me into a stronger place of faith. Where I can just jump in head first like Isaiah. Uh, instead of needing to search through 20 different scriptures for verification. All right now. Trying to find a way out. Uh, yeah, all right. I don't want to be like Doubting Thomas. Yeah. I don't want to feel like I have to ask Jesus to show me his wounds. That's mm -hmm. Every time he's speaking to me to put my anxious mind at ease. That's good. He already paid the price. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, he did. Yes. But he loves me enough to show me his wounds time yes. and again yes. anyway. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Does God show you the same? Yeah. Do you feel like you're answering the call to your commission? Mm. 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 Lining up with your purpose has some benefits, though. Yeah, it does. You think you had favor before? I dare you accept your calling. Wow. Mm -hmm. yes. Everyone around you will have to make an adjustment or just leave your presence. Mm -hmm. Dead leaves have to eventually fall off. Mm -hmm. yeah. People that were in your life for a season will have to go. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The atmosphere around you will be shifted. Obstacles will be shifted for you. They'll still be there, but there'll be more room for you to maneuver around them. Mm -hmm. Everything all already points to his purpose. So you might as well do your part and get in line. Colossians 1.16, for in him all things were created. Things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. It is what it is. Mm -hmm. Don't be scared. Like I was. <laughs> I always remember uh, Jeremiah 29 11, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Right. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Yes, right. And I also like the, uh, the scripture, Matthew 28 18 through 20, 
Then Jesus came to them and said, All the authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And and surely I am with you always to the very end of age. You don't have to be T.D. Jakes or or Billy Graham to make a difference. Everyone plays a part. Mm -hmm. Most of us may want to be more like T.D. Jakes or Billy Graham. And a lot of us wouldn't want to be like Mother Teresa. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Preaching God's word to multitudes of hungry souls on a huge platform in a stadium like cathedral somewhere is what Billy Graham did often. And that's what T.D. Jakes does often now. Um... I imagine he flew on a private jet to where he had to go. He probably had a huge entourage, you know, with people waiting on him hand and foot um, to make sure his knees were taken care of so that he could focus solely on delivering God's word. Yeah. But my father told me a story uh, back in the day where um, Billy Graham went to visit Mother Teresa. He just, he wanted to see, you know, why she was having such an impact on the world and uh, and kind of trying to support her ministry. Um, so he went he went over to, uh, I believe it was Calcutta, um, mm-hmm. yep. where she was uh, working day in and day out, washing people, feeding them, praying for them, ministering in, in the most loving way. Mm-hmm. Um, Billy Graham showed up. She didn't meet him at the airport. There wasn't a huge, you know, uh, fanfare waiting for him. He had actually come to her in the slums where she was. And um, after witnessing kind of what she was doing over in Calcutta, um, he he got pretty inspired. He was like, um, I love what you're doing, you know. I'm, I'm paraphrasing. Um, how can I? How can I help? What can I do to help your ministry? And um, what she did was she handed him a bedpan. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, um, how many of us, if we were asked to do that for our, as part of our ministry, how many of us would? ask for something else. Mm-hmm. How many of us would be like, nah, this ain't, nah. This is, what you want to do. This is not how I see myself helping you, Lord. You know. <laughs> um, but we need to grab our bedpans. Pick up your cross and walk up the hill to glory. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Jesus was the blueprint. Our screenplay was already written, so go ahead and star in it. Mm. Mm. It's the only way his light can shine through you so that people can see that shine and, 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 uh, and want some of that. Mm. It's, it's, you got you get down with the get down. So... Jesus didn't pay the ultimate price so you could squander your inheritance. Your sins have been atoned for, not by a fiery coal this time, but by the Lamb of God. Your guilt and shame has been washed away with the sacrificial blood of Christ. Those obstacles have been moved so you can move forward in your purpose. Ask God to show you what your purpose is. And accept it, and he'll order your steps in the direction you need to go. That's all I got. Thank God for sharing the word. Who brings credit? He took his jacket off and rolled up his sleeves and helped clean up dying, smelly people with her. 
Christ. That's the gospel. And that says a lot about him. I, I, I would expect him to do that. I really had great admiration for Billy Graham and his ministry. He refused to go to South Africa unless, in the 50s, unless they would have plenty of room for black people to be there along with the whites. And he was a man of great integrity. I didn't uh, agree with everything he said throughout his life, but uh, he was a child of God. There may be somebody here this morning who needs to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Let us all stand while the choir sings. If you already know him, but you don't have a church home, you feel the Holy Spirit drawing you to be a member of the Trinity family, come down.